Rendezvous, broadcasting from the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center in San Francisco. This is Scale the Wall, powered by NASDAQ Private Market. Stay private on your own terms. You can get more information by going to npm.com. Well, small business owners always face challenges and big business owners as well. What they need to learn how to do is scale the wall. I'll discuss the challenges every entrepreneur faces and how they've overcome these obstacles and scaled the wall to success. Joining me is Keith Kroc, Chairman and CEO of the electronic signature software maker DocuSign. Keith has a long, successful record in business. He was also named National Entrepreneur of the Year by Ernst & Young and receives the Technology Pioneer Award at the World Economic Forum in Davos. Keith Kroc, welcome. Well, thank you so much. That's Tweet. a lot of awards. Wow. Good uh, for you. Man. I sleep with them under my pillow at night, Tweet. <laughs> you, hug, you hug them very tightly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They're, They're my daddy back. They're not that cuddly, though. Yeah, well, you know. Okay. Well, beggars uh, well. can't be choosers. <laughs> But you, know, you have all this experience in business. With DocuSign, what's been the biggest challenge in growing DocuSign? Well, I think you know the, the challenge always is um, scaling uh, at such a rapid rate. I mean, our business is accelerating. I, I think that's, uh, that, that's always it. But we're very fortunate because we have a great leadership team. We have a great uh, middle management team. Uh, team, so I, I always think it's uh, along those lines because the market is so absolutely huge, and we've got uh, you know tremendous partners that we work with, and the value proposition is just so quantifiable. Yeah. Uh, well, last fall you announced you would be stepping down as CEO. <laughs> Why? Well, you know, for me it was uh, originally when I jumped in as the CEO, the board just said, "Hey." Just do it for a couple of years because I never thought I'd go back and do the <laughs> CEO, they always say, the, you know. the CEO <laughs> gig again. So uh, I presented, yeah, about a year ago. Built the last succession plan. We didn't put a timetable on it, so we're uh, we're still looking out there. The, and you know, it's funny because the press calls it the number one CEO software search in the world. <laughs> it's been going on for a while. It's been going on for a while. How come it's taking so long? Well, I think it's uh, we set the bar really high, and uh, you know, when you think about the future of DocuSign and where this is going in terms of the DocuSign Global Trust Network. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have just uh, not missed a beat in terms of uh, our performance. Uh, there's, there's no hurry, but we're, we're looking for that ideal person. What's the single biggest mistake you've ever made in your career? Tell us about that. Yeah. Well, I think it might be, uh, actually when I first came to Silicon Valley, um, you know, I left uh, GM on my 30th birthday being a VP. People thought I was nuts back then because it was VP a high pot. You were at just 30. Uh, yeah, 26, yeah. I think. Oh, oh uh, my gosh, even younger than that. But, you know, it was one of those things. It's like back then you, you stayed uh, at GM for life. So the first company I, I came to, um, it was a COO role. And I'll never forget meeting that uh, or my first day on the job with the CEO. And she said, you know, I want you to say this to the board. And I go, I'm not going to say that. That would be lying. And, um, and it was one of those things where what I took for granted at General Motors mm -hmm. was great people and um, strong values. Mm -hmm. And I spent a year of my life, you know, being torn between um, I've never quit anything in my life uh, to... Am I living my values every day? And it was torture. And finally, it came to a head when my oldest son was actually being born in the hospital. Mm -hmm. And IBM had been a big investor in this company. And she called me up. She goes, Keith, you got to come in. The IBM guys are here. I go, hey, listen, my son's being born. It went on multiple times. And so finally, I told her to do something that's anatomically impossible to do. Mm. And, uh, and I quit. You quit. And the thing that was, uh, uh, I think, great about that was out of that, uh, literally came the womb of Razna, it came the uh, uh, Ariba, and DocuSign. And um, that so what did you learn values from that? What did you learn from that experience? Well, what I, I learned from that is that values uh, and your moral compass is the most important thing. And people are the most important thing, yeah. regardless of the category, the industry, uh, anything like that. What will you do after you step down as CEO of DocuSign? Well, I'll be, I'll be fully engaged with DocuSign. I got DocuSign blue in my veins. <laughs> but, but for me, 
you know, in addition to having uh, five wonderful children, for a thing that I've always enjoyed is um, uh, mentoring CEOs. Uh, that's a passion of mine, and leadership development. Also, a passion of mine is, uh, you know, g giving back mm -hmm. and 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 paying it forward. So there's a lot of um, uh, great noble causes out there. We yeah. have the DocuSign Impact Foundation. I'll continue to be the, the chairman of, of that. So, Beautiful. and I think that's kind of the magic of, uh, of Silicon Valley. What's the largest risk that you took that paid off in terms of the biggest reward, would you say? Hmm. Well, for me in my career, I think it was come at, uh, leaving General Motors, mm -hmm. where I was on the path to you know, go all the way to the top. And that was, you know, I, I always tell a young guy, that was something back then. That was the most powerful company in the world, sure, right? Sure, sure. Um, and what and made you leave at that point? And what made you think that this is the risk I want to take? Well, you know, at that point, a, and the, the, the last thing I did is I ran a ro uh, the robotics joint venture between General Motors and Fanuc, and I got a taste of the high-tech thing, and we were selling robots out here in Silicon Valley. Just drive business and I said man I wonder what it would be like if everybody was kind of a part owner of the company and start something from scratch and so it was almost curiosity as as much as anything and I also knew in a big company um, uh, things had to go your way uh, and I could see politically and sometimes you could see the blood to the top and all that <laughs> and so I think it was a question of being able to control my own destiny and, and it paid off well. Well, it's it was the right it, decision. It, it, it's sure been fun. I can tell you that. Yeah. Does it ever get easier uh, as you, you know, do more and more companies, or are the risks and challenges just different every single time? Yeah. Well, it never it never gets easier because the more successful you are, the higher the expectations, mm. and that's what's fun about it. Um, higher th the higher the expectations that you set for yourself or that others set for you or both? Well, I, I think it's both. So you have to make sure you set them first. Yeah. Uh, and I think, um, you know, if I'd give a message to uh, the young entrepreneurs, it would be set those big audacious goals because that, uh, that wins the hearts and the minds of your employees, your customers, your partners and all that and uh, you know when you create a category from scratch which I've been fortunate enough to do for four times and you create a standard um, and you create networks uh, you're gonna have a lot of people say you can't do that now that inspires me if somebody says yo you can't do that crock that's your motivation that's right my motivation yeah yeah yeah. You know, that's a good lesson, though, because I was at a talk recently with Valerie Jarrett, uh, the senior Obama advisor, uh -huh. and she said that one of the biggest mistakes, looking back, yeah. is that she did not reach high enough when mm. she was younger. Uh -huh. And that's what she's learned. And mm -hmm. that was the lesson she passed on to the young women in the yeah. audience. Yeah, exactly. That's a good point. And, and, you know, the thing that I always say uh, to the young leaders, the young entrepreneurs, the young folks in college is, uh, the key is don't be afraid to jump in water over your head because you're going to learn how to swim. It's, you know, sometimes you know you're jumping in over your, your head, sometimes you don't, but you're going to learn how to uh, swim and, and, uh, and, and take those risks. And that's what makes it fun. And after a while, it actually becomes addicting. <laughs> so, if, you know, if I look... The I adrenaline I rush. If I, yeah, if I look at my life and just keep jumping in water over my head all along. <laughs> I'm, I'm over my head right now talking to you, Tweet. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm, I'm such a soft interviewer. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> um, we always like to wrap up the segment by asking the guest, um, what are the three biggest lessons to learn in dealing with the challenges of growing or starting a business? Yeah. I think one of the first ones is don't get too high on the highs and too low on the lows because it's going to be... Uh, a roller coaster ride. We call it we we call it scary fun, um, and uh, and here again, you know that's that's probably uh, an, an adrenaline rush. Uh, you know the other key aspect I think too is um, don't forget uh, at the end of the day that uh, it's really uh, about encouraging the heart and inspiring a shared vision and enabling people. Uh, to act and how important it is to model the way in terms of key, you know, the key leadership 
uh, imperatives because every, every, everybody's watching you. You know, so many people just focus on, you know, oh man, I'm on the money side, right? Mm -hmm. And then I, I think the third thing is um, uh, always measure your success by the customer's success. So for example, you know, at DocuSign, it's the ROI. We measure that quantitatively. We measure net promoter scores for our customers pre and post DocuSign. Uh, risk and compliance by the XDTM standard. And it and also it applies to your partners. So in other words, we model our success with our partners mm. by uh, uh, what is important to them. So for example, for Salesforce, we're on-ramp to mobile. Mm. For Microsoft, on-ramp for Office 365 to the cloud and uh, selling E5. Mm -hmm. You think of SAP, put the simple in run simple and be a big part of their cloud uh, revenue because they resell. So you think about Google, it's uh, helping be s sticky in the enterprise. You think about IBM, it's all about our data in terms of right at the heart of the transaction of mm -hmm. who, what, when, and where. As a leader, what is your style? To be loved or to be feared? Uh, well, uh, hmm, definitely uh, feared. <laughs> I'm a scary, scary <laughs> guy. Uh, no, I, th I think uh, the most important thing uh, of leadership is having range. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a certain time for consensus and there's a certain time for command and control. Uh, you know, through years and pattern recognition, hopefully you get the wisdom to know when to be what and everything in between. And you've got uh, four and a half year old twins. Yeah. I don't know how you boy, do it. A boy and a girl. I and I've know. done controlled <laughs> experiments because I've seen the product life cycle with the three other ones. Uh, I do A-B testing on them. The results are in. <laughs> and the how are the results? Here are the results. The girl is superior. She's the natural leader. The boy just follows her around laughing 80% of his time doing whatever she says. I call him thing one and thing two. That's funny, that's <laughs> funny. All right, let's hear it for girls. Yeah, amen. <laughs> the hand that rocks a cradle rules the world. <laughs> but your son is a good role model in you, right? You're going to oh, teach him a few things about business as oh, he grows up. He, yeah, he, by the way, he's already a natural. He calls himself the chief engineer when he builds a Legos. <laughs> and, then he, and then he wants to blow him up, of course. Of course, yes, of course. Yes, he's a boy. <laughs> Keith, it's been a lot of fun to have you in. Keith Crock of DocuSign, thanks so much. Thank you so much, Dwee. It's been an honor to be here. Well, join us every Friday as we scale the wall, powered by NASDAQ Private Market. Stay private on your own terms. You can get more information by going to npm.com. I'm Twee Boo, and this is Business Rockstars. <laughs>